during the construction of our lesson plan, we always have to start with an end in mind. And in starting with an end in mind, we have to remember our learning targets or the three domains of learning. We have three domains of learning and our mnemonics for that is C-A-P. That's cognitive, affective, and psychomotor. Okay? Cognitive targets refers to those targets which are actually looking into the goals of developing the mental processes of our students. While the effective target will be more of targets referring to the values, motivation, character, and attitude of the students. There are two focal concepts in the effective target and those two focal concepts are motivation and attitude. While the last one is the psychomotor domain which is for the enhancement of student skills. It may be thinking skills or manipulative skills. Okay, so we will start now with the cognitive targets. For the cognitive taxonomy, we have two references. Bloom's taxonomy and Anderson's taxonomy. For, but, for Benjamin Bloom, we have the mnemonics K Kaase. K stands for knowledge, then C is for comprehension, A is application, analysis, S is for synthesis, and E is for evaluation. For Benjamin Bloom, the highest among the order of cognitive thinking skills is evaluation. While for Anderson, the mnemonics is R-U-A-A-E-C. And for this, R is remembering, U is understanding, A is applying, another A is analyzing, E is evaluating, while C is creating. Now for Anderson, creating is the highest among the cognitive, ter cognitive thinking skills or cognitive taxonomy. What are the difference between the two? First difference, or what are the differences between the two? First difference is the terminologies. They just chose different terms, but the meanings are the same. For instance, Knowledge is the same as remembering. Comprehension is synonymous to understanding. Synthesis is also synonymous to creating. Now, another difference that they have is that for Benjamin Bloom, the highest among the thinking skills is evaluation. Fifth is synthesis, but the highest is evaluation. While for Anderson, the highest is creating, which, which has the same meaning as synthesis, while fifth among the higher order thinking skills for the cognitive target is evaluating. Now, we are going to discuss cognitive taxonomy in reference to Benjamin Bloom. Let us now start with Bloom's taxonomy. The first one is knowledge, K. The letter K in K Kaase is knowledge. Knowledge is the foundation of all learning. They say that knowledge is the lowest form of learning, but still it is the foundation of all learning processes because you will not be able to synthesize, analyze, apply, or evaluate, or even comprehend if you cannot recall the information or if you cannot remember the information. Now, what is knowledge? Again, Knowledge is simply the recall of an information. If an information is a fact, as long as your students can recall all the informations that you have discussed, then they have or they would fall under knowledge. For instance, if you would ask your student, what is the center of the solar system? And your student would say that the center of the solar system is the sun, then the student could recall, and in your objective, you may write, at the end of the lesson, students should be able to recall or to identify the center of the solar system. Or they could define the sun. As long as they can memorize or they have memorized the information, then the skill is falling under knowledge. 
Now, the salient feature about this level of taxonomy is that they know but they do not understand. Hanggat kaya nila na sabihin yung information kahit na hindi nila naiintindihan kung ano yung meaning ng information na sinasabi nila, they are falling under knowledge. Okay? So now, if we would like to enhance the skills of our student under the taxonomy knowledge, what are the learning objectives that we have to use or that we will use in our lesson plan? First, you can have objectives which have verbs like define, enumerate, list down, identify, or recall. Okay? So with that, an example of objective under knowledge is this. Define nouns. This objective, define nouns, is an example of an objective under knowledge. Or you can have enumerate the parts of a flower. Enumerating the parts of a flower would just require a person or a student to recall all the parts of the flowers that they have learned from the discussion. At the same time, they just need to memorize the meaning of nouns in order to meet the objective defined nouns. You can also have their objects, objective starting with state. If your subject is political science, you can use state the preamble of the Philippine Constitution. As long as they can memorize the preamble of the Philippine Constitution, they will be able to meet the taxonomy knowledge. So, if you have questions, you may ask your teachers. No? The next one is comprehension. Okay? So, the first one would just encourage you to memorize. Even if you don't understand it, as long as you can recall the information, you would have the skill, knowledge. But if you want your students to gain skills in understanding, then it should be, the objective should be under comprehension. What is comprehension? Comprehension refers to understanding. Now, when we say understanding, the student can now give examples the student can now explain. The student can now uh, discuss. They can describe. They can paraphrase. Those are the common verbs that we use under comprehension. Why? Because a student will not be able to give an example unless he understands the lesson. For instance, if your topic is all about nouns and under knowledge, your objective is for them to define nouns, then the objective under comprehension may be to give examples of nouns. That your objective is at the end of the lesson, the students should be able to give examples of nouns. Or you can also use at the end of the lesson, students should be able to identify nouns in a sentence. Or you may also have, at the end of the lesson, students should be able to discuss the preamble of the Philippine Constitution. So that would merit under comprehension. Because aside from requiring them to memorize the preamble, you want them to understand the preamble so that they can discuss it on their own. So that's... The of that, that's the taxonomy comprehension or the level of taxonomy comprehension. Next, we move to application. What is application? If you know, once you know, and then you understand, it means that the third step will be you will be able to use. 
and application refers to using the knowledge that you know and you understand. I will repeat, application would mean using what you know and what you understand. Okay? So since you are going to use things that you know and things that you understand, therefore, the salient feature of application is that there is a process that you would follow in order for you to distinguish application from other cognitive targets, specifically synthesizing or creating, you have to remember that when you are applying, you are using a process, you are using a guide, you are using a rule. There is a procedure that you have to use which you know and you understand. That is why you can apply. Example. Construct a declarative sentence. This objective would now fall under application. Why? Because you are asking the student to construct a declarative sentence and in order to construct a declarative sentence, they have to follow a set of rules in sentence construction. They will apply the rules in sentence construction and the processes in constructing declarative sentences so that they can make a sentence under it. Aside from that, aside from that example, in mathematics, solving the area of a triangle, solve the area of a triangle would also fall under application. Why? Because there is a formula, meaning the formula has to be used in order for them to solve the area of a triangle. That without using the formula, without applying the formula, they will not be able to compute the area of a triangle. Now, what are the verbs that we use in constructing objectives under application? So, we have construct, solve, find, identify can also be used, apply can also be used, create can also be used. So, those things may be used under application, in constructing objectives under application. So, that's the third one. Okay. Now we go to analysis. Analysis is the process now of breaking down the information into its small parts. So I will repeat, it's the process of breaking down. Since it's the process of breaking down, it means that if you have one big concept, you are going to break down the big concept into its small parts. Let's give an example. For, for instance, this big component is living organisms. That's the big component. Now, the big component, which is living organism, has to be broken down into its parts. What are the characteristics or what are the key components of living organisms? You can have there three major classifications. You may say we have plants, animals, and men. So those are the key components of living organisms. Now, in order for you to understand each of the components of the living organisms that was broken down into three, you have to break down again the characteristics of men, the characteristics of animals, and the characteristics of plants. So for example, what are the characteristics of plants? Can plants move? They move based on tropism. That 
That is by following light. They are not mobile. While men, I sorry, while men is mobile. They can run. They can walk. Animals, when it comes to mobility, are also mobile. They can run and they can walk. Okay? When it comes to plants, they release carbon dioxide. At the same time, aside from that characteristics, they are used as source of food. They need light and water in order to survive and for photosynthesis to happen. So we have broken down all the characteristics of plants from the big concept living organism. Now, we have another concept broken down from the big concept living organism which is man. Aside from being mobile, that they can run and they can walk. Okay. So now, the fifth one is synthesis or synthesizing. If analyzing means breaking down the concept into its parts. Synthesizing means building up a new concept out of the synthesized ideas. Meaning out of the bits of pieces coming from different ideas. So, paano yun? Pagalugin natin na, pag sinabi natin synthesis, o pag sinabi muna natin analysis, magbe-breakdown tayo. Ibig sabihin, kung meron tayong bato, may isa tayong malaking bato, dudurugin natin yung bato para mapaghiwahiwalay natin yung konsepto ng big stone na yun. Pero dito sa synthesis, ang gagawin naman natin, magbe-build up tayo. Anong ibig sabihin ng mag-build up? Ngayon, sa synthesis, ang gagawin natin, kung meron tayong tatlong bato, yan, meron tayong, if we have three stones, ang gagawin natin, dudurugin natin yung mga bato na yon, Yung tatlong bato na yon. Tapos, dito sa isang stone na ito, yan, we have broken down different stones into pieces under analyzing. Ngayon, under synthesis, we will get one part of this, one part of this stone, one part of this stone. Okay? So, magiging tatlo sila at makakabuo tayo ng bagong konsepto. Which is, we create something which is different, something that is new, something that is coming from us. We did not follow any guideline, we did not follow any rule, but because of our knowledge or about the broken down pieces that we understand, kinuha natin isa-isa, bit by bit, parte by parte, dun sa iba't ibang concept na alam natin, at binuo natin siya ng bago. So magbigay tayo ng halimbawa. Halimbawa, marunong kang magluto ng pakbet. Marunong kang magluto na chapsuy. At marunong ka rin magluto na, o marunong ka rin gumawa ng mango shake. So sa chapsuy, kinuha mo ngayon yung patatas at carrots sa chapsuy. Doon naman sa pakbet, kinuha mo yung sweet potatoes, yung kamote. At doon naman sa mango shake, kinuha mo yung mango at yung milk niya. Pinaghalo-halo mo ngayon yung tatlong ay uh, yung iba't ibang sangkap na yon. At nakabuo ka ng bago mong menu. Pwede mong sabihin na mango in vegetable salad. So, nakapag-synthesize ka ng bago mong recipe. Ang tawag doon ng synthesis. Bakit? Because it is new. Because it is your original. In converting formulas, or in constructing, not really converting, no? But in constructing your own formula to solve a particular mathematical problem, that is under synthesis.
I will repeat, in synthesis, you build up a new concept out of the bits of pieces that are coming from different ideas or different concepts. Our example then is this. For instance, you ask your student to develop an intervention plan to solve water pollution. Okay. Since you did not say copy an intervention plan to solve water pollution, it means that it will be their original because you want them to develop. Pag sinabi mong develop an intervention plan to solve water pollution, sila ang gagawa ng intervention nila. Hindi sila kokopya lang ng intervention program. At paano nila makoconstruct yung intervention plan nila? Manggagaling yan sa iba't ibang ideas, sa observation nila, sa mga nabasa nila sa libro, o doon sa nakita nila na paraan ng solusyon na ginawa ng community nila. And they would check out if that solution is applicable to the community where which needs, the, which is needing the intervention. So, yun ang tinatawag natin na synthesis. Okay. So, now we are going to have the last and the highest among the cognitive taxonomy. That is evaluating. Based on Benjamin Bloom's taxonomy, the highest again is evaluation. What is evaluating? When we evaluate, we give merit, we give value, we judge, we justify or we cite whether it is an advantage or a disadvantage. Now, um, it is easy to understand evaluation because you would be able to notice that there are value or there are merit or there are judgment attached to every objective. So kapag ka meron nakalagay doon na rate, ibig sabihan magbibigay ka ng judgment. Pag sinabi na nung ka doon, whether it is effective or ineffective, an advantage or a disadvantage, good or bad, then the level of the objective is under evaluation. The usual keywords that we use under evaluation, evaluation are judge, justify, evaluate, defend, rate, identify, give the effectiveness. So those things are under Evaluation. So, an example of an objective under there, under evaluation is here, judge whether garbage incineration is an advantage. or a disadvantage for the environment. Just simply ask yourself, what is to be judged? What is to be judged there? Whether garbage incineration is an advantage or a disadvantage. There is merit that is being asked. So therefore, that would fall under evaluation. So those are the taxonomy of Benjamin Bloom under the cognitive domain. Now there are tips that I would like to tell you. Remember that in identifying the level of the objectives, do not, do not, or don't ever rely on the verbs or on the keywords. Because there are some keywords that we may use from knowledge to evaluation. Example, the keyword identify. Identify as a keyword can be used from knowledge to evaluation. For instance, if you are asked to, under knowledge, you may use identify with the objective identify the nine planets in the solar system. It will just fall under knowledge. Under comprehension, you may say identify nouns in a sentence. That is under comprehension. 
Under application, you may use identify by asking or having an objective identify the area of a triangle. In analysis, you can have there identify the uh, identify the gender of nouns used in a sentence. In synthesis, you can also use it by saying identify plans of action to solve water pollution. While in evaluation, you can also say identify whether garbage incineration is an advantage or a disadvantage for the environment. So you see, the keywords are used as patterns. But it is not all the time that you have to rely in the keywords. What you need to do is to always read the full objective so that you would be able to know the level of that objective. Okay? So that's all for today. Hello po sa inyong lahat. Um, Inimitahan po namin kayong lahat na nag-subscribe sa aming YouTube channel, Eduk Central. Ang lahat po nang mapapanood nyo dito ay tungkol sa mga subjects or academic matters na under the professional education para sa licensure examination for teachers. Kaya i-encourage po namin ang lahat ng mga education students at lahat ng mga nagnanize na mag-take ng board examination for teachers na mag-subscribe sa aming Ako po si Danica Anike Lorenzo from Eduardo L. Costa Memorial College. Ako po ay instructor ng professional education sa scholar ng bayan sa institusyon na nagbibigay ng scholarship sa mga uh, deserving na lobo isihan. Eduardo L. Costa Thank you so much at mag-subscribe na po kayo sa aming Edu Central Channel.